Okay, now that you've seen the video clip from A Beautiful Mind, you've seen a pretty inaccurate depiction of John Nash's basic theory. Nash was a mathematician who won the Nobel Prize in 1994, and he did so by showing, uh, using game theory, how a non-cooperative, how an equilibrium can emerge in a non-cooperative game. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the actual example from the movie, which is not Nash's own doing. Matter of fact, it's a pretty convoluted way of looking at things. Um, he had John Nash in a bar with four of his friends. A beautiful blonde walks in with four of her brunette friends, beautiful brunette friends. And as they're all oogling over the blonde, Nash realizes if we all go after the blonde, then she's going to reject us all. And so they'll end up with zero and zero. They end up all going for the blonde. And he reasons that if we go after the blonde and then she rejects us and we go after the brunettes, they're also going to reject us. So our best strategy is not for all of us to go for the blonde. Matter of fact, our best strategy is for all of us to choose to go for a brunette. And if we all go for a brunette, we'll end up at three and three. Now, given I've used Nash as one person and other guys combined for the other, for the red group, they will always end up with zero if they choose the blonde because there's more than one of them. And so their best strategy is always going to be to go for the brunette. Knowing this, Nash's best strategy then is to go for the blonde. This is actually what one of his friends accused him of. You're going to get us to go for the brunettes, and then you're going to automatically come in and go for the blonde, and you're going to make, you know, be better off. And this is an example of that happening. That's not necessarily what he talked about, but it gives you an idea of what's called the Nash Equilibrium. Given that the best strategy is for the other guys to go after the brunette, then Nash's best strategy is to go after the blonde. There is no dominant strategy here, but it is a Nash Equilibrium. And given what the other side has chosen, this maximizes his happiness. We can look at this, again, as somewhat of a prisoner's dilemma game that we've already looked at, but we use these things to understand strategy and business strategy. And let's take two stores, Large Mart and Buy More, and they're engaged in selling something. Let's say it's the Xbox One. And if they both price high, then Large Mart's going to get $8,000 in economic profit, and Buy More is going to end up with $4,000 in economic profit. And that's actually what maximizes their joint effort is where their joint profit is both pricing high. If they price low, however, then they'll both end up with less than. Large Mart will end up with 4000 Buy More will end up with 3000 in economic profit. So their joint interest is to both price high, but notice that it's in their individual interest to price low. Regardless of what Buy More does, Large Mart's best interest is to price low. And regardless of what Large Mart does, Buy More's best option or best strategy is to price low as well. And they end up in this lower right hand quadrant, 4000 for Large Mart and 3000 for Buy More. And that's again the worst outcome possible. What happens though if we can get a credible commitment, much like you watched on the Golden Balls episode with Nick and Abraham, what if Large Mart takes on a position? Again, we're looking at this as if it's a one-shot deal. But what if this was a sequential game, a, a one-shot deal, but a game that was going to be repeated through time over and over and over? Large Mart commits to pricing high. And if Buy More doesn't follow suit, it's going to go back into pricing low, and it's going to punish Buy More. And so if it can get Buy More to understand that we're going to play this game repeatedly, and we're going to commit to pricing high, and you commit to pricing high, any one defect is going to be punished by the other side on the next round. And then all of a sudden, both sides are now pricing high, and you end up with an outcome where both teams price high. Now, for this punishment to happen, first off, you have to be able to observe the defection. You can't just guess. It has to be something observable. And when you do punish, you don't want to be the punishment to be so great. It's got to be a punishment that hurts the profits but doesn't destroy the company and you end up with this pricing high strategy. Problem is, any of these collusive type of agreements are very, very hard to keep going. Again, you do want to have some monitoring, and if there's a punishment, it works, but they're still very hard because there's always the incentive to cheat. Let's take a look of a market with two firms. The market demand curve is 100 minus 10p. The 
inverse of that demand curve as p is equal to 10 minus 0.1q. We derive a marginal revenue curve of 10 minus 0.2q. And if we say that the marginal cost is $2, we set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. And in the market, 40 units will be sold at a price of $6. This is the profit maximizing output for the both firms combined is they both sell 20 units at $6 each. The market quantity sold is 40. And this is in the best interest of the two firms combined. And here is their individual demand curves each one of these two firms faces. Now what we can see is it pays for one firm to cheat. Let's say one of the firms decides to lower the price to $5. It now sells 10 more units. The first firm is still selling 20. The second firm is selling 30. Even that could be wrong because some people would leave the firm selling at 6 bucks and go to the firm selling 5 But let's just use this. It's now going to sell 30 units instead of 20, charging $5. Its profit is going to be higher. When both firms committed to selling 20 at $6, the profit or the surplus for the firms was $80. It sold 20 units at $6. Its revenue was $120. Its variable costs were $2 times 20 units. That's $40. So the surplus was $80. If the firm cheats, it's going to sell 30 units at $5. That's going to be $150 and it's going to incur a cost of $60, 30 units times $2, and therefore its profit is now $90 instead of $80. So it's very, very difficult to keep firms from cheating. And so what's going to happen now is the second firm is going to lower its price, taking money away from the first firm. They're both now going to be selling 25 units a piece at $5 for a total profit of $75 each. So we can take a look at this using the game theory. Here's Large Martin buy more again and they can either collude or cheat and here are the exact outcomes. If they both collude, they agree to sell 20 units each at $6, both end up with $80 in profit. If they both cheat, they both end up selling 25 units at $5 each, they end up with $75 profit. It's in their mutual interest to collude. However, it's in their individual interest for each firm to cheat, but combined that puts them in a worse situation. We can see that Again, the best option is to collude, but the best individual option is for large mark to cheat and for buy more to cheat. However, if you can get the collusive agreement to take place where they both agree to collude and sell 20 units of $6 a piece, you could end up in that right hand quadrant, but it's also very, very difficult to get the other firm to go along with that. Now we can look at one more pricing strategy. Let's say uh, Large Mart is going to sell something and if it prices low there's not enough money in it for any other firm to enter the market therefore it's going to get $100,000 in profit. Let's see, you know, the cost could be pretty high but its profit will be $100,000. If however it prices high then that gives an incentive for Buy More to enter the market and Buy More has to decide whether it's going to go in and if it prices low, with a 40% chance it'll price low, Large Mart's profit will only be $20,000. And if it prices high, Large Mart's profit is going to be $170,000. Okay, So it has a 60% chance that it's going to price high, and it's got a 40% chance that it's going to price low. But that higher price for Large Mart gives it an option to earn more economic profit relative to it just pricing low. So what it wants to do, it makes a decision whether it wants to price high or price low. And if it prices high, it knows that Buy More is going to enter the market. There's a 40% chance that if Buy More, Buy More enters the market, it's going to price low. There's a 60% chance that if Buy More enters the market, it too is going to price high. If it prices low, Large Mart's going to earn only $20,000. If it prices high, Large Mart's going to earn $170,000 in profit. That expected value is 110, and given that 110 is greater than 100, then Large Mart's best strategy is to price high and accept what Buy More is going to do. That's the end of the Game Theory video.